Hi, I'm Numan and I'm a product engineer at Postman. And today we're going to talk about API testing. So why should you test your APIs? APIs are the primary interface to your application logic and they form a critical contract in the systems we build these days. So testing for APIs can help us identify these contract failures faster and fix them before they affect the API consumers. So what should you test for when you talk about API testing? Here at Postman, we recommend you think about API testing along these four broad categories, starting with functionality. Testing for functionality is where you check whether the API is behaving the way you expected. So you send a request out, the response comes back, and then you verify whether the response is what you expected. Performance is where you verify whether the API is performing as expected and it gives a response within a reasonable time constraint. Reliability is where you verify whether your API is up and available for the API consumers. And finally, security. This is very important and often missed out. This is where you verify whether your API is secure and it does not allow any unauthorized access or usage. So how can Postman help you with API testing? In Postman, you can write your tests in JavaScript and Postman executes this JavaScript just after the response is received. So you send a request out, the response comes back and then Postman would execute this JavaScript after the response comes back. And within this JavaScript, you can access the request that was sent out, the response that was received, and any variables that were active for this request. And you can access all this through a set of special JavaScript variables and functions we call the Postman Sandbox API. After we run this JavaScript, we show the results of your tests in a dedicated section in the UI called the test results tab, which is in the response area. And this is where you can see the names of all your tests and their statuses. So let's jump into the Postman app and try some tests for some APIs. So I'm going to start with the Twitter API as an example. So this is the Twitter search API. I can use this API to search for tweets that contain a special string or a text. So we recently concluded our first Postman user conference called Postcon. So I'm just going to search for any tweets that talk about Postcon 2018. Uh, this API uses Auth1 authentication. This is already set up in my case. So I'm just going to go ahead and send this request. All right. So I'm going to scroll down to the response area. I can see that the response came back. It had a status code of 200 and it has some great tweets that talk about Postcon 2018. All right. So the API is behaving as expected. So let's test this API now. So the way you write test is with JavaScript and you can write this JavaScript in the dedicated test section in the request area. So you get access to a code editor where you can write your JavaScript. Now to write a test in Postman, we give you access to a special test function that is part of the Postman Sandbox API. And you can find that under pm.test. So pm is a special variable that is uh, globally available. And within pm, there is a test function that we would use to write these tests. And that is a function. So each test needs two parts. One is a test name. And second is a set of assertions that you run to make sure whether the test passed or failed. All right, so first let's write a name for this test. So here to start with, I'm gonna test whether the response code is 200. 
because this is usually an early indicator whether the request succeeded or failed. So because we are testing for status code 200, let's name our test status code is 200. Right? So that is our test name. Now we're going to write a set of assertions to verify whether the status code is what we expected. So the second argument is a function. And within this function, we would write these assertions. So the way you write assertions in Postman is by using another special function called pm.expect. And first, we need to get access to this 200 OK value within this JavaScript. And the way you do that is by using another Postman Sandbox API to get the response. So as I mentioned earlier, you have access to your response also within this JavaScript. And you can access that with pm.response. So this is a response object. And we need the status code of this response. So I'm going to get that through dot .code. So this would, if everything works well, this would have your status code 200 inside this variable. So I'm going to say I'm expecting this status code to equal 200. So this is what an assertion looks like. If you are used to chai JS, this you would find this, this syntax very familiar. In fact, pm.expect is powered by chai JS under the hood. All right, so let's run this request again. And when the response comes back, Postman would run this test script for us that we just, just wrote. So let's send this again. All right, so the response came back again. It still seems to be 200. And now if you scroll down to the response area, you would see there's another section called test results. If you click on that, you would see that there is a passing test. So Postman would group all your tests in a nice section in the UI and show you all the results for the test that you wrote. All right, so that is a simple test where you test for the status code. Now, how do we test for more complex use cases? How do we test whether the response body has what we expected? All right, so now if you're lazy like me and you don't like typing a lot of code, uh, you can use the handy snippets that we have provided on the right side. This is a set of frequently used snippets that people use to write tests. So we have grouped them and provided them for easy, easy use. So I'm just going to find one where I can check for some string in the body. Right? So I'm just going to click on this and Postman would just pull that snippet in and add it to your test. So I'm just going to modify this test name to something more meaningful. So this, as I mentioned earlier, this is an API call where we are checking for any tweets that has postcon 2018. So let's check whether the response body has this string postcon 2018. Okay. So body should have postcon 2018. Okay. So this is uh, another special API that we use to get the response body. So pm.response.text will give you the text, uh, the body in plain text format. And we're just going to say that that body should include postcon 2018 somewhere. Right? So that is another test. So we have one test where we check for status code and we have a new test that checks whether the response body has postcon 2018. Let's go ahead and run this. And now we can see there are two passing tests in our case. One is where we say the status code is 200 and the other is where we check whether the body has postcon 2018. Now this is how a passing test look like. Now how does a failing test look like? So I'm going to intentionally fail this test. Let's say instead of 200, 
we were expecting 201 but the API would still give 200 so it should fail so I'm going to send this again and now you can see that that particular test is marked as failed and because you are writing an assertion we can also show you why exactly that particular test failed and that it, that test failed because we expected 200 which was here to equal to 01 and these things did not match all right now we know that people use a lot of assertions built on top of the response like here we build an assertion built on top of response.code and here we build an assertion on top of response body so postman also supports a shorthand syntax for you to quickly write assertions without pm.expect and i'm going to show you that now so we can start with pm.response and pm.response is also a special object where you can write shorthand assertions so i'm going to write to have status 200 let's run this again and see whether this passes all right so that passed so this is more readable and uh, easier to write than writing pm.expect and this is also the recommended way to write common cases like this mainly because if these tests fail postman can give you more debug information on these failures so now since that postman knows what part of the response you are asserting the assertion error can have more information saying that we expected the response to have status code 201 but got 200 instead so whenever you get a chance use this shorthand syntax now if you've been a long-term user of postman you would be more used to the the older syntax of writing tests which is using the test object so we still support this and we will be supporting this for the near future so the way you write tests in the older format is by adding a key to the test object so should pass and the way you mark whether that passed or failed is by setting that to a true or false value so i'm going to say true so you can say that we mark that test also as true so if you want to write this test in the older syntax you can do the same i'm going to copy paste the test name and i'm going to say pm.response.code I'm just gonna make the test name stand out. Alright, so because this is 200, this would evaluate to true and we would mark this as a passed test. So we're not limited to just testing for status code or response body. You can test for other parts of the response also uh, for response headers and also response time so i'm going to quickly grab a pre-filled test script that has all these so this is the earlier two test cases that we wrote and there are also other shorthand syntaxes for testing for the header so here we are making sure the response has the header called content type and to test for performance we are making sure that the response came back within one second so we are saying pm.response.response time should be below a thousand milliseconds and since it came back before that you can see that all the tests passed all right so that is how you write tests with javascript in postman now i'm going to show you one last example with slightly more involved and complex testing now if you have a lot of data to test from your response it can get quickly cumbersome if you have to individually write assertions for every field so there's a quick hack you can follow which is to uh, define the schema of your response 
and then ask postman to match the schema completely. So here uh, I'm going to resend this request. Now here we can see that this is a huge response. It has a lot of tweets that came back and if you go down there's also this special metadata that comes for every search uh, we do with Twitter. So I'm going to I, I want to verify this now. So the way I'm going to do that is by defining the schema of this particular object. So I'm going to say it looks like an object. So it's a type object. It has these following properties and these following properties have values of these types. So this is the JSON schema format. So we're going to define this format and we're going to write a test to validate the schema using an inbuilt library. So this is the first time we're covering this. So we include certain useful libraries within this JavaScript for common use cases that our users have run into. So here to validate the schema, I'm going to use a library called TV4. It's called Tiny Validator 4. And you can use that by using the variable TV4 and you can validate your schema using tv4 by using the dot validate method. The first argument is the response data and the second argument is the schema. So we already defined the schema here for this object that we are testing. And to get access to this data from response, we already saw the pm.response.text syntax to get plain text. There's also a special pm.response.json. This is where if you're working with JSON responses, you can call this so that Postman will automatically convert this JSON to a JavaScript object, which is easier to work with within the JavaScript environment. So this is a JavaScript object for this whole response and dot search metadata would give me the data for this particular field. And the validator will give us true or false based on whether it ran successfully or not. So let's go run this. And you can see the test passed. So in one shot, we validated a few fields from the response. All right. So that's all the examples I have for today. So to recap, you saw how to write JavaScript code in the dedicated test section and Postman would run this JavaScript after the response is received. And the way you write tests within this JavaScript is by using the special pm.test function, which needs two things. One is the test name and then a set of assertions. And you write these assertions using pm.expect, which is a chai js compatible function and you can get access to the response by using pm.response we also saw how to use the built-in library tv4 to you to do quick schema validation on a part of the response so to summarize test scripts are written in javascript they are run just after the response is received and you can assert for response status, response headers, body, and response time. You can also access the, the request and the variables also within this JavaScript. And there are built-in libraries like TV4, which can be used for quick JSON schema validation. Thank you.